Michael and I'm the author of the Apprentice Witch series and for this evening's bedtime story I thought I would read you a little bit from the first chapter of the first book The Apprentice Witch but just to tell you a little bit about the stories they're set in a world where magic is real where everybody has to deal with magic on a daily basis but thankfully there are helpful witches in the world who are there to help you if you get into a magical problem so for example if you've got a nest of snotlings somewhere in your house then you can call your local witch and she'll come around and deal with it for you or if you've got a tricky test coming up at school perhaps you could ask your local witch to make you a magical charm and that might help you sail through that test. Who knows? Anyway, at the beginning of the story, we meet Ariane Wynne Gribble, who's our main character, and she is off for a very, very important test. So for this evening's uh, bedtime story, I'm going to be reading you chapter one from The Apprentice Witch, and this is called The Civil Witchcraft Authority. Witches of Highland, the poster declared. Your country needs you. Join up today. Ariamon stared up at the elegant woman gazing proudly from the poster. The woman's hair was golden and flowing, her lips bright red. She wore the dark navy uniform and the silver star of a fully trained witch. Ariamon glanced down at her coat and the space that her own star would soon occupy. She would be late if she stood daydreaming much longer. Grabbing her bag, she skipped between the crush of passers-by through tall, wrought iron gates following the signs for registration. Other witches rushed past, some now proudly displaying bright new stars and broad grins. Administrative staff carried stacks of files or clutched clipboards. The air was full of excited chatter and the tang of damp wool, coats and antiseptic. Ariamon's wet shoes squeaked across the polished floor. She joined one of the several haphazard queues and suddenly wished that she hadn't. Jimma Alveston was handing over her identity card at the desk, surrounded as ever by a small group of other young witches. Jimma looked just like the witch on the poster outside, all flowing golden hair and bright smile. Ariamon patted nervously at her own messy curls and tried to shrink back into the line. But... She was too late and too tall. One of the other girls, a smart looking witch that Ariane recognised as Polly Walden, spotted her and nudged Jimmer, pointing in Ariane's direction. Jimmer glanced over, offered a mean, tight smile, and whispered something to the others. The corridor rang with cruel giggling, and Ariane went red. Jimmer was cruel and a snob, and you were either with her or against her. She'd been like this since they first met at school five years ago. As they had been the only witches in their year, everyone had assumed that they would get along. But Jimma had made it quite clear she didn't want to be friends with Ariane, and that was that. Oh, look, it's Ariane Dribble, Jimma called out as she retrieved her card from the young man at the desk and tucked it away in the silly little beaded bag that she always carried with her. Ready for your evaluation? More laughter. Jimma moved slowly down the queue until she reached Ariamwin. I've already been offered a position as a private witch for a family in Highbridge, you know, she said smugly. I wouldn't be seen dead dealing with some old dear's brownie infestation or making charms for a bunch of country bumpkins. What do you reckon you'll be doing, Dribble, if you pass? The other girls crowded around Ariamwin, smirking. Jimma flicked her mane of shiny hair. I do hope they find you something you can cope with. Nothing too taxing. Not everyone has the luxury of the training my family provided for me. Who trained you, Ariamwin? She asked, even though everybody already knew the answer. Ariamwin didn't reply, her cheeks burning. I heard it was her grandmother, Polly whispered nastily. She wished more than anything that she had the nerve to do something, say something. But she looked away, as she had so many times before, finding a spot on the wall to focus on, even as the tears pricked at her eyes. This was the usual way she dealt with Jimmer's taunts. Ignore her and she'll get bored. Um, name, miss. Hello. Ariane had reached the front of the queue and hadn't noticed. Jimmer and the other girls had wandered off. 
A harassed looking young man about her age smiled politely at her as he fumbled with piles of folders and a typewriter and various notes. His dark hair flopped across his face and he tried to blow it out of his eyes. Oh, sorry, I'm Ariane and Gribble, she smiled. And do you have your identity card, please, miss? Gribble. Oh, here you are! He yanked a brown card folder from the bottom of the precarious pile, which wobbled threateningly. He blushed at Ariamwen, handed over her witch's identity card, clearly stamped with a large UA for an evaluated apprentice. And as the young man reached forward, the column of paperwork shifted, quivered, and slowly started to slide towards the floor. As quick as a blink, Ariamwen leant forward and with her index finger sketched a tiny symbol on the desk. It was Bria, the air glyph. It glowed with a soft blue light that only a witch could see. The papers and folders not only righted themselves, but also started to slide into the correct order on the desk. The boy smiled again. Oh, thank you. What is going on here? A voice, raspy and indignant, cut through the hubbub of the room. A shriveled, spidery woman in a severe grey suit that didn't fit entirely well stood glaring at them both over the top of some very thick spectacles. Oh, Miss New, I'm sorry. I was just about to fetch you. This is Miss Gribble, here for the 11 o'clock evaluation ceremony. Miss Newham continued to stare, as if waiting for further explanation. Oh, well, you see, the boy continued hopelessly, there are so many files and they were all getting in, the, in a muddle with so many witches coming and going and suddenly, whoosh, they're all falling on the floor. And Miss Gribble here was amazing. She just tapped something on the desk and they all zipped back into place. Look, good as new, he gestured to the orderly pile of folders. The woman's eyes narrowed to two tiny slits. Colin, I am neither interested nor concerned with what Miss Gribble did or did not do with your folders. It is your job simply to ensure the apprentice witches are put through for their evaluations as soon as possible, not to engage them in performing little tricks. Colin glanced at Ariamwen and shrugged. Miss Newham hadn't quite finished. If it's not too inconvenient, perhaps you could go and fetch the files I need from my office. I'll deal with Miss Gribble. Colin gave Ariamwen a gentle smile, his cheeks flushed, and jogged off down the corridor, dodging the tide of oncoming apprentices. Miss Newham is really not his fault, Ariamwen attempted to explain, but fell silent as Miss Newham's full attention turned on her. Miss Gribble, we don't want to keep everyone waiting. I have two more evaluation ceremonies to get through today. What with the war work claiming some of our most experienced witches and the recent increase in dark spirits, every village and hamlet from Golden to Vellingstone has suddenly decided it needs a witch. We simply can't keep up with the demand. Yes, I see, Ariamwen said. Do you have any family with you? No, I'm on my own, she replied, feeling guilty about slipping out of the apartment so early and hiding the letter with the details of the evaluation from her grandmother. Miss Newham shot her a suspicious glance and opened the brown file on the desk, flicking through some of the papers. Just turned 15. You've been an apprentice for only two years. Yes, Ariamma replied, but I wanted to. And you were trained by uh, Maria Stranelli, my grandmother. Miss Newham gazed over the top of her spectacles. I see. And now you're an apprentice to... Ariamma blushed, recalling Polly's taunts. My grandmother. Well, that's rather old-fashioned. Miss Newham stared hard at her, then back at the paperwork, as if she were trying to figure something out. Then her face lit up. Oh, Madame Strinelli is on the Council of Elders. She peered closer at Ariamwen through the jam jar bottom spectacles and smiled. But it was bitter and tight. Not really a smile at all. A knot of anxiety twisted in Ariamwen's stomach. She could see Miss Newham was about to say more when a tinny voice crackled out from a speaker fixed high up on the wall. Could all apprentices for the 11 o'clock evaluation ceremony please proceed to the central courtyard? That's the central courtyard for the 11 o'clock evaluation. Thank you.
And if you want to find out what happens to Ariane next, then you can read the rest of her adventure in the book The Apprentice Witch and in the second book A Witch Alone and the third book A Witch Come True, all available now from Chicken House. Thanks very much.